If you've ever wanted to use a Wi-Fi adapter and you don't want to connect via SSH, AirServe NG is a great way to be able to use multiple network adapters all through Wi-Fi. We'll show you how it works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. AirServe NG is a tool that allows us to take a wireless network adapter and make it accessible to any other computer on the same network over the internet. Now this is really cool because if we have a situation like a Raspberry Pi and we want to just have it serve up a whole bunch of wireless network adapters like this, then rather than having to have this directly connected to our computer, we can instead connect to the Raspberry Pi and then use all of our favorite Linux tools on our computer just substituting the IP address and then the port number of the actual device we want to access. Now this is a huge advantage over just doing something like SSH, because in order to do that, we would actually be inside the Raspberry Pi, which is not really a suitable environment for doing things like password cracking. Instead, we can just access it over the network and use all of our favorite Linux tools directly from our computer, which is a big advantage because the Wi-Fi connection will encrypt our connection anyway. Now in order to follow this guide, you'll need a Raspberry Pi or another computer to serve up a wireless network adapter. And you also need a computer on the same network that's capable of using it in something like Airmon NG or Kismet. Once you have a Linux computer ready to go, you can check out the article linked in the description if you need any help troubleshooting. Once you've done that, then we can get started. Now I tested this on a Ubuntu computer earlier and it worked just fine. So no, no matter if you're on a Raspberry Pi running Raspbian or if you're on a Kali Linux machine, this should work uh, just the same. And you should be able to install it with a simple apt install aircrack ng. That should include this as well as some other really useful tools. As you can see, I already have it. So let's go ahead and look and see what it's used for. So here you can see in the manual, manual description that it allows us to basically use a network card as a networked resource, meaning anybody on the same local area network is capable of using the card as though it was connected directly to their computer. So what this translates is to is we'll be able to use an IP address plus a port number in order to active uh, to basically instruct a card to do whatever we want uh, just by kind of being connected to the same Wi-Fi network. So. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we can do with it. So first, let's go ahead and see two different use cases. It's going to be setting up a network card so that somebody else on our network can use it. This could be a teammate. Maybe you're setting up one computer with a whole bunch of network adapters so that uh, a bunch of different people can all log in and use whichever one they want. That's kind of the primary use case of this because if you were to get into someone's computer and try to use this to exfiltrate data, uh, it probably wouldn't be a very great idea because it's not encrypted and it's not really attempting to obfuscate what's going on. So first let's go ifconfig and we can see we have WLAN zero connected, but I've, connect I've plugged in a wireless network adapter and this version of Kali is getting a little finicky. So I if I type IPA, I can see there's actually WLAN one connected as well. So I'm going to type type ifconfig wlan1 up and that'll bring up the network card. Now if I type ifconfig again, I should see wlan1 is available. Cool. All right. So let's make this card wlan1 useful for other people on the network. Let's say we have another teammate that's running a computer that's just able to do some basic nmap scans or maybe is wanting to do a Kismat uh, review of the area to see what kind of wireless networks are around and they don't have the right kind of network card on their computer. So they're gonna rely on this in order to get access to a card that actually does comply with uh, whatever it is the tool they're trying to run needs. So cool, let's first put it into wireless monitor mode with Airmon NG, start WLAN one. And then after that finishes running, we'll type ifconfig again. And here we go. We can see it's now wlan1mon, which means it's in monitor mode. Great, now let's serve this up. We can type airserve ng. And first I'll run tac h to see the help menu. And you can see it's very simple. We specify the port number, default is 666. 
uh, the interface, which will be tac D, and then the channel we want to use if we want to set that uh, device to a particular channel right off the bat. So first let's do AirServe NG and then tac D WLAN one mon. Great, so now on port 666, we're serving up this wireless network adapter. So in a separate terminal window, I'm going to scan myself and see what is up. I can see my IP address here on the network. Oops. And I can do nmap uh, and then 192.168.0.16. And now we can see there is a single port open, port 666, so, and it is the port of doom. The great, okay, cool. So to see if this is working, uh, let's try a normal command, which would be something like arrow dump ng. Normally we would access this by typing in the name of our adapter, which would be wlan1mon. But let's try something else instead. Let's try doing this over the network with uh, 192, 168, oops, 0, 16, port 666. There we go. And it works just the same as though we had connected to it. I don't disconnect. Uh, it works just the same as though we connected to it by using the proper name. So this would be true for any computer on our network. Now to demonstrate this, I have a Raspberry Pi that's on the same network as me, and I'm going to first scan for it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and actually try to connect to it. So let's first look for a Raspberry Pi, and we'll look for it by looking for uh, port 22. So I'm gonna scan for port 22. I'm going to specify 192.168.0.0. And then I'm going to specify open. All right, so we have found two different devices. One of them is a Dell and the other is a Raspberry Pi. Great. So now we know that the uh, IP address for this is 192.168.0.27. Great. So let's go ahead and do a scan that'll show all the different ports that are open rather than the one we knew that the Raspberry Pi was running. So we'll go ahead and replace this with dot 27. So we're not scanning the whole network. And then we'll also specify a different type of scan. So rather than scanning specifically for 22, we'll just see what services are open. Oops. There we go. Okay, we can see we have 111, 222, and port 22 open. So I also know that there's another port that is open. Maybe it's just not seeing it but 333 should also be open as a network device. So, all right, what I'm gonna do here is attempt to use one of the wireless network adapters I've set up on the Raspberry Pi on this local computer. Now, we're gonna do it basically the same way, arrow dump NG, but this time we're gonna connect to a different wireless network adapter. So we're gonna go and connect to 192.168.0 uh, and then 27. And now we have a choice of which adapter we want to connect to. Do we want to connect to 111 or 222? If we were maybe a red team or a group of hackers working together, we could have a Raspberry Pi in our bag connected to all sorts of crazy wireless network adapters, depending on the circumstance we needed, and just pick and choose by selecting which one, in this case, 222. Now I'm listening through the, uh, the wireless network adapter in the Raspberry Pi. However, the cool thing about this is I can do all my cracking programs, I can control this remotely just by being in my computer. I don't need to SSH into the Raspberry Pi, and I went ahead and canceled out of this, but I don't need to be in the Raspberry Pi and subject to its limited resources, so I can use the device with a lot more memory and a lot more power to do basically the same thing without the fuss of being inside the Raspberry Pi and just instead serving up the network resources so I can access it more freely. In a scenario where we're connected to a Raspberry Pi serving up multiple wireless network adapters via a Wi-Fi connection, AirServeNG is perfect for using a variety of network adapters or even sharing them between different people. Now over a shared network, this might not be the best use case, because if you have anyone sniffing for traffic or if you maybe gain access to a computer on a network and want to infiltrate it and use its network card, 
it would probably be best to use SSH because that connection would be encrypted and you wouldn't be able to see everything that you're doing with the network card in plain text. Now keep that in mind, if you were to port forward and maybe open this up to the general internet, that entire connection would be visible and you would be basically opening yourself up to a lot of sniffing because the connection of what you're doing with that network card is not encrypted. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you need any help troubleshooting, you can check out the article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.